<laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, doing amazing. How are you, Latrisa? Same, same. I was out in nature all day today. So I'm just like, just happy <laughs> for that. You said you're just, just what from that? Happy. I'm just, you know, just feeling good. I got to put my feet in some fresh water. I got to just be surrounded by trees and do some grounding today, be out in the sun. So anytime I can do that, I always just feel really good than just being in this box. I'm in New York in the city, so I live in an apartment. Okay. So <laughs> New York, New York. Whoa. Yes. So, wow. So in the city city, definitely. I'm right so in Harlem. Harlem. Oh man. So do you get out a lot, Latrisa? Do you get out a lot into nature quite a bit then? Lately, because I've just been like prioritizing it more, you know, I've been really in that space that I want to reconnect with nature a lot more lately. Like it's there, there's a bunch of parks, but I just didn't really, I just didn't really have, have that. Uh, I guess I wasn't on that frequency to like reconnect. I would just kind of like in the hustle and bustle, which is easy here to just go, 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 go. And I wasn't really stopping to like take that time and make that connection. But lately I have been, and it's been transformational for sure. Okay. Yeah. What, what was, what was an indicator for you, Latrisa? Like what, what kind of let you know that it was time, you know? Honestly, I, 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 was, I feel like, you know, food, <laughs> it was food, really? it's always food. Um, I was getting like a lot of allergic reactions to things. Like I've had like a really interesting journey with food and um, just on this latter half of it, uh, most recently I was, I did raw vegan for nine months and then I was consuming only fruit for about two full months. And then I did a 30 day juice cleanse. After I tried to transition off of that 30 day juice cleanse, cause I didn't intend for it to be 30 days. I just started it and I was like, oh, I just want to see if I can make it one day. And it just kept, kind of kept going. I was feeling great, better and better every day. So I stuck with it. But then at the end of that, I was like, you know what? I think I want to eat like cooked vegan again. I'm just going to go back cooked vegan. And my body was like, no, it was just not happening. And I was trying to figure out what it was like, what is going on? Like, I never had these reactions before. Like, why can't I transition back? What's happening? Um, what I concluded was that the oil in the food, my body just could not handle those canola oils and soybean oils and vegetable oils. It was just giving me like extreme inflammation. Okay. So I weaned my way off of that and I started going back fruits again and vegetables. So like raw vegan again, but I started to get these like hives. I would break out in like hives, like welts every time I would eat like certain things. So I'm like, okay, let me scale it back. Let me scale it back. Trying to figure out what exactly it was. And um, the well, only thing I could find was that um, they were saying that uh, some fruits have histamines in it. So like if your body just naturally has high histamines, which is what gives you allergic reactions and you consume something that also is high in histamines, your body can't process the histamines fast enough. And that's what causes the hives. So that's just like my Google search of what I thought it could be. But so I'm like, okay, I can't even eat certain fruits. So it started like my wheels started turning. I'm like, okay, there has to be another way. <laughs> there has to be another way because how is, I never imagined that like I would get welts and things like that from avocado and like nuts and seeds. Like those are supposed to be safe foods. So I just started thinking, I was watching a lot of your, um, videos here and like the dots just started to connect because you know we connected last summer while i was on my juice cleanse i found you on youtube so the pieces started going together and i'm like hmm okay this this mindset of natural state and it started taking me back back even before fruit like what was happening i'm like okay colonization and i'm like okay we never used to wear shoes mm. you know there's like 
like a lot of things, the fabrics we wear, like all of the contaminants and pollutants and toxins that enter into our bodies. I'm like, huh, they say you can get vitamin D from the sun, but how? Huh, we're absorbent. Okay, so we're absorbent. We absorb nutrients, vitamins, and minerals from something other than intaking. Mm -hmm. So that's what really sparked me into like the soles of my feet I can absorb okay wait a minute if I, I put my feet in the soil the soil grows fruits vegetables trees like all these things you know is all the minerals are in the soil so let me just try that so that's kind of what got my wheels turned into like reconnect with nature because I'm like I feel like that, that is more of the path because I've had lots of experience with um you know, hormonal imbalances. I've had fibroids before. I've had like a lot of reproductive issues. And I'm like, okay, if this natural state, if our body can balance itself out, repair itself and be at this natural state, mm -hmm. then anything that we intake is going to throw off that balance because now the body has to figure out, okay, there's something in here right. that we don't really need or we got to figure out what to do with it. And it's just imbalancing. So I was like, all right, I need to reconnect with nature. <laughs> wow. Oh, going back to nature. This is so, I mean, this is such an important message. And I love that you are making your own discoveries. You're doing your own observation. <laughs> it's like you're you're a scientist in your own laboratory, you know? Yes. It's awesome. It has been, oh. I feel like that. I feel like it has been quite the experiment. Um because there are people out there talking about it, you know, very grateful for you and everyone that you bring on your channel that speaks about this topic, because I don't feel like it's talked about enough. Like we hear a lot about diets. And yes, I do think that there are levels to it, uh, can be levels to it. I know the story you shared about your transformation or your journey was you went straight from standard American to all right, I'm fasting. <laughs> so, you know, not everybody has to take those steps, but I do think, you know, if the steps are necessary for some people, I can see where that is because I've climbed the ladder from standard American to like pescatarian, to vegan, to raw vegan, to fruitarian. And it's just like, you, I, I have experienced healing along those ways within my body by like getting rid of a lot of that meat and a lot of the things that I guess more drastically imbalance you or um it's just harder on your body to process um yeah like i got i i eliminated fibroids i didn't have to have surgery just from being raw vegan for five months they came out naturally and my gynecologist was like yeah no you're gonna either have to be on medication for the rest of your life so they don't continue to grow or you're gonna have to get surgery and you didn't have to have either. I didn't have to have either. Wow. I ate raw fruits and vegetables for five months and I did like green juices and things like that. And they just came right on out on their own. Wow. <laughs> wow. What what did that teach you, Latrisa? Like what what did that like what what kind of education did that give you when you witnessed that just coming out of your own body? Yes. After, you know, after they said that you were either going to have to be medicated forever or have this surgery. Like, what did that it, tell you? It changed my life. It, it really changed my life. And um, it, it, it made me know, it made me confident to stray away from kind of like what we've been taught, like what, like we, what we know about food or what we you know what they've taught us about food and needing you need this and you need protein and you need that and you need like all these different things it really opened my mind to really question now hmm, what else is the body capable of or you know like it's there's i'm more powerful than i think than i thought i was you know it really just opened my mind to the possibilities for sure exactly exactly so much more powerful you know like i'm still figuring out you know just how powerful we are it's just amazing yes. you know it's really mind-blowing and i love when you're talking about these things latrisa when you're talking about 
you know, one of my friends talks about the, the soul and he says, you know, we can put the, the sole of our feet, right? The soul in the, in the soil. Yes. And, and then let the soul, the sun, you know, heal your soul, right? Yes. So, <laughs> like, so yes. you did that, you know, when did you, when did you learn or when did you discover that you could really trust your own body, you know? I think that, that was it. I think that was like monumental for me because also prior to that, now I can't remember the gap of time, mm -hmm. but maybe a, a, a year or so prior to that, I had found out that I had pre-cervical cells on my cervix, pre-cancer cells, excuse me, on my cervix. Oh man. So they were like, you you know, you have pre-cervical cancer. And at that point, because I didn't know the power of my body to heal itself, I was like, okay, I'll do the surgery. So they gave me two options, a leap procedure, which is you get like a part of your cervix lasered off. Or the second one was um, cryotherapy, which they put do for like warts and stuff. They put like, like beyond freezing cold temperatures on your cervix and it's supposed to like freeze the cells so that they die off. Wow. So, wow. so I ended up going with the cryotherapy, wow. which was what like the freezing cold air and it, my body freaked out. Like I could not leave the office for, I don't know, sometime after like an hour or two, I could not collect myself enough. I was vomiting mm -hmm. nonstop because I guess it just threw off the temperature of my body, whatever it did. They're like, oh my gosh, we never like um, experienced anyone having this kind of reaction to this. So they were just as, you know, baffled as I was. Um, it took like till the next day to stop vomiting. And then my cycle was off after that. I bled for three months straight after that. Three months straight. I was terrified. I was terrified. And of course they were like, oh no, no, this, this surgery, this procedure would never, you know, that's not, that's not us. Cause you know, nobody wants to take the blame for it now. They're like, we don't know why you reacted like that, but you know, the average person doesn't, their bodies don't respond like that. We've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Then they were like, oh, you're just stressed. That's why you have excessive bleeding. They were trying to like put it on every other thing. And I'm like, yeah, but this wasn't happening right. prior to me having this procedure done. Right. Right. So it's right. kind of like they threw their hands up. So then the next time around when the fibroids came, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm not going that route. <laughs> I'm not getting poked or prodded or injected or <laughs> sprayed. <laughs> no, I'm not doing none of that. I'm just gonna allow my body to heal itself. And I had seen a lot of people on Instagram talking about reversing diabetes and reversing like all these other ailments from going raw vegan. So I was right. like, you know what? I'm gonna try this because for my pre-cancer cells, I did like soursop and like, you know, other herbs to help kind of like restore my body. So I was able to get back to a you know good place with that. Then the fibroids came and I took a different route. So it's like that time when the fibroids came out from just changing my diet, I was like, okay, my body is, my body's way more capable <laughs> than I ever imagined that it would be. Super, you know, it, this is amazing. You know, just yeah. hearing your story, Latrice, like hearing your testimony, <laughs> is already fascinating like what you've overcome the adversity that you've gone through the things that you the trials that you faced and like the hurdles like everything in your way you've you've come out of it you know you've come out of it on the other side stronger wiser better for it you yeah. know and just more knowledgeable with more wisdom of yeah. your body's inner intelligence and was that the time, like, would you say after the cryo and after your cycle for months and just bleeding from, I can only imagine, you know? Yeah, would never you say, <laughs> Like, would you say that that's when you kind of like let go of the medical field or you said, you know what, let me, let me go within? Yes. Okay. For sure. Because I was like, I don't want to go through that again. It was <laughs> like, I, I just, I don't want to do that again. That was wild. Okay. <laughs> there has to be a better way. There oh. has to be. And then now, like, since I, since I um, have journeyed on B 
beyond that and I started juicing, mm -hmm. I started getting more clarity. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, there's something here that's even like a, another level from like the raw food. Right. <laughs> because I started getting a lot of like thinking more clearly. I could breathe better. I didn't have so much mucus. Mm -hmm. I felt really good. My energy was a lot better because you know, my body wasn't so focused on digesting, digesting, digesting. Right it had time to like do other things. So I just overall felt a lot better. And then there was a, um, a Instagram group that was doing a nine day juice cleanse recently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. It's been a little while. Let me just go for it. So I did it. And today I think would have been day 11, 12, day 12. So I did the I did the juice cleanse. <laughs> yes, I did, I did it like three days longer. What? And so and what so what I also was being more mindful and more intentional, right? Because now yeah. I incorporated the grounding. I've been getting out to the beach once a week, like on my days off work. I've been getting in the water. I've been sunbathing, and like all of that together, I feel like that gave me a new level of. <laughs> a new level of experience and i even did a 24-hour dry fast whoa. during that time whoa, whoa. so i was like whoa. what was what was that like like was that was that the first time you had dry fasted or you'd done it before so I, I had dry fasted before i was trying to do um i was into really learning hebraic culture maybe like two summers ago and i did a three-day dry fast and that was the longest I ever did, but I wasn't working at the time. Wow. So I was literally just reading the whole three days to like keep my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually a good point that you make there, Latresa, because, you know, during dry fast, it's like when people go, you know, in these, we call them prana days or freedom days, or some people call it the natural state. Mm -hmm. When you're in that state and you're just like, you're not, you have no distractions of consumption. <laughs> Like, yes. like you, you're allowing your body to function. You're not focusing on consumption. Yes. You know, you're not, you're not eating and feeding, you know, so you have all that you're needing. But then at the same time, some people feel like they're depleting. Some people feel like, you know, they're competing with their mind. Like there's a war, there's a battle going on. So you're saying that you just read during that whole period, like that occupied you through the whole three days? Yes. Wow. <laughs> And I napped. I napped on okay. and off. Okay. So okay. That, that was like, I'm like, wow, who knew I could go without any like food or drink for three days? So that also, again, expanded my mind. I'm like, hmm, yeah. I know I can at least last for three days, you know? So that gave me the confidence this time around to like, yeah. okay, I'm just going to do a day. So I had done 24 hours. And actually, I forgot I did a road trip with my best friend. I think it was two weeks ago now we drove from Pennsylvania to North Carolina. Mm. And I was like, if I eat a bunch of fruit and drink this whole ride, we're going to be stopping for me to use the bathroom. Like every, you know, every hour or so. So I just, I chose to fast. Yeah. So I did a, a 24 hour dry fast then. And then two weeks later now I did another one, but the experiences are always they're always different, mm -hmm. but I feel like they're always so profound and so powerful. Like my dreams and like, it, it's really, that is even a whole nother level. You're just like tapped in beyond like this tangible, you know, mm -hmm. experience. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, it's just, it really is something something special it's, it's something different like i feel different yeah. um i do have the battle sometimes in my mind like this go around this very last one that i had just um you know because because we have kind of been conditioned so long sometimes i'm like okay i don't want to get dehydrated like if i'm out in the sun on the beach or something i'm like okay am i dehydrated but i know how to look at my urine to see Okay, is it getting dark? Okay, no, I'm not dehydrated. It's still light. It's still like the color it should be. So yeah. I always kind of am mindful of that just because I am venturing into 
more fasting experiences. Like I want to do it more often, mm -hmm. like dry fasting. So I'm like, okay, I still kind of look for the signs to make sure that I'm good. Okay. Um, as far as like dehydration or, you know, any anything else that I could possibly think of that could be like, oh, di like dizziness or headaches or, yeah. you know, lightheaded. I'm always checking in with myself to be like, okay, are you good? Right. Okay, no, no, I'm good. And also not, um, you know, that feeling of like hunger at first. Mm -hmm. that you kind of get when you stop eating mm -hmm. it's like after after a little while like that feeling goes right. away like sometimes right. it's like you just gotta push through that feeling of what we think is the body is saying is hunger mm -hmm. but like when i think about it i'm like i honestly don't know what's going on anymore. yeah <laughs> I can't see what's going on <laughs> exactly exactly that was the same thing like um that was the question that i had to ask myself as well Latrice. you're you're bringing me down memory lane because you know i had to really question all the different sensations that i used to i used to equate this to oh this means i'm hungry i need to eat something or oh this means i'm weak i need to have something or oh this, means this and that and it was just things that were going on in my body and i didn't really know what was going on you know i just kind of thought that that's what it meant but it doesn't mean that that's what it meant yeah. you know yes. yeah because it's kind of like we de default to what we've been taught right. or what we're used to we're like oh that means i'm hungrier but it's like does it really like maybe it's just doing stuff in there like maybe it's repairing maybe it's you know right. like we were talking about the other day like the body does things other than just digest food yeah. when it has the opportunity to absolutely so i started thinking of all those things and um even if I would say like, okay, every time I would feel a sensation of like, okay, maybe I just want to take a sip of juice. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay, how does my stomach feel? I'm like, no, okay, I'm chilling. And I'm like, okay, my mouth is a little dry. Or like, you know, just really kind of assessing it so that it's not just like, because what has been really strong on my mind, we talk about food as an addiction, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm mindful of like, okay, am I just about to take a sip? Cause I want to. <laughs> You know, just because I'm like, but do I need the sip? Mm -hmm. Is what is happening in my body enough for my body to function mm -hmm. just without the sip? You know? right. So it really is kind of like this past time I really did kind of have that back and forth in my mind of like assessing what this would be like if I were overcoming some kind of addiction because I, there were points where where I would um, be a little irritable, you know? And I'm like, well, I guess when you go through withdrawal, you might be a little irritable. <laughs> if you were overcoming some sort of addiction, that might be something. So I'm just mindful of um, my actions, mindful of my words, mindful of my interaction with others. Mm. Like this has really helped me with my pace. Yeah. Like even just like, you know, getting through the day, taking my time more, not rushing to do everything, right. my patience. Like, I also made it a thing for myself to, um, you know, when I'm waiting for the train, not check the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, two minutes. Okay, one minute. Okay. It's just like, I'm just going to stand here until the train comes. Yeah. I'm not going to pull out my phone. I'm not going to check the time. I'm not going to scroll Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stand here and be present and wait for the train yeah. <laughs> so you really do. Just, yeah just changes your yeah. perspective and shifts your thoughts a little bit more and i become like a lot more um i'm always kind of in my mind anyway i don't mm -hmm. know if that's part of me being an air sign i'm always kind of like thinking and kind of like mm -hmm. in my head mm -hmm. um but my level of awareness uh for myself and others has has increased like especially when i'm dry fasting it increases yeah. a bunch I, I love that mindfulness you know latrice i love your mindfulness that awareness of your surroundings that awareness of your internal world ex ex as well as the external world like going at your pace it is never a race and there's nothing to change yes. you know <laughs> Like, I, re I mean, there's been so many times where I've been at the grocery store, like grabbing some juice or some coconut water. And, you know, I'm just, you know, walking down the aisle, just walking 
And then so many people will be coming out the aisle, like pushing their carts. And I'm just like, okay, go, go ahead. Yeah, He's go like, ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, it's all good. Yes. Or like, oh, you know, and everybody is just, you know, they're just all going and I'm just kind of just flowing, but everyone else is going, you know? Yes. So you really get, you, you become aware of just a shift in other people's consciousness. Like people are just really moving at different speeds yes. in reality. And they're, you know, they're thinking differently. They're breathing differently. You know, they're moving differently. They're grooving differently. <laughs> and I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you said earlier, Latrice. You were talking about Hebraic culture. You were yes. saying something. What, can you talk about that? What, what about yeah. that was inspiring at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, so um so maybe like two things so but in regards to the dry fasting when i did the three days there's a um a feast a hebraic feast called purim or purim p-u-r-i-m mm. and um at that time in culture the um the israelites were like in captivity and they dry fasted for three days and prayed so that then when they went, when Esther, it's in the book of Esther, so that when Esther went to the king at that time and asked for the freedom of the Israelites, he, he, it was granted, you know, they were removed from slavery at that time. But it was linked to the, the them dry fasting for the three days. So like in honor of that, um, in honor of that, that celebration or that time in history, What's supposed to happen now, to my understanding, is that it's supposed to be actually a three-day feast to celebrate that freedom. <laughs> but it was my first time. And I was like, oh, it says they dry fasted for three days, so I guess we're dry fasting for three days. <laughs> well, but you know, you know, some people call it an air an air feast, you know, right. even though some people like some people have switched the terminology. <laughs> And they've reframed and retrained the mind and the programming of, you know, sometimes when we think of fasting, there's a connotation of deprivation. Yes. So to, to flip the connotation of deprivation, they think of themselves as raising vibration. Yes. So yes. they say, instead of I'm dry fasting, I'm air feasting. I like that. Right? Yeah. So I'm feasting on air. I'm just feasting on other sources of nourishment i'm feasting on another source of energy you know i just i'm just not having solid food right now that doesn't mean yeah. that i'm like you know that doesn't mean i'm withering away right. you know? yeah right so, so it was a piece it was yes a piece. <laughs> yes it was absolutely it was a piece and that there were all kind of like magical things that happened too yeah. during that time like manifestation is fast when you when you're dry fasting or feasting air feasting mm -hmm. the manifestation is like so fast it's like everything that i was wanting or willing or whatever during that time happened like as soon as i left my apartment because i was in my apartment for three days it was like boom 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 like i was like whoa Oh, this is this is amazing what was what so, was one of those manifestations like what was one of those things that just you know popped up almost yeah like so i wanted to help someone i really wanted to help someone because that was there's also something in there where um somebody was being very helpful in that story of Perim in, in the book of esther and i wanted to i just wanted to help someone because you know in new york it can get overwhelming because everybody's asking can i have a dollar you have this I'm hungry, I'm homeless, I'm, you know, it's constant. And um, I was at a place where I was getting really closed off from that. And I was just like, <laughs> I don't really want to, I don't really want to, you know, give, 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 give. Like I just wasn't in the space. You kind of get numb to it after a while because you get asked every day okay. for money or whatever. Um, and I was like, you know what? I really want to break free of that and I want to be more helpful. So the day that I uh, broke the fast, now at this point, I was like new to fasting and like, you know, I didn't know how to properly break a fast and like slowly <laughs> wean your way back on. So I was like, I'm going to get some fish and chips <laughs> to break a three day dry fast. <laughs> so I go down to the fish market. And there's a guy that just walked right up to me while I'm standing in line. And he was like, can you help me get some food? I'm hungry. And I was 
was like, absolutely. Because immediately I remembered like what I had kind of been like manifesting. Immediately I thought of it. I was like, absolutely. What would you like? So I walked into the deli. I let him pick. It was right up the block. I let him pick whatever he wanted to have. And I paid for it. And just, he was like, thank you so much. He went about his way. I went about mine. And I know like sometimes when we think of manifestation, it might be like, oh, what did I get for me or something like that? But no, I just, I really had the desire and I wanted to help somebody. And it was like the minute I left my apartment to do the first thing I was going to do, the person just, he walked there. There was a line of people. He walked directly up to me and asked me <laughs> to help him. So I was like, that's, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also had an opportunity to donate a bunch of clothes. I donated a bunch of clothes nice. um, down the block. There used to be a bin where you just drop kind of like old clothes and they can go to whoever. Okay. But when I went in to ask the lady at the gas station about the bin, she's like, oh, we don't do that anymore. But I would love to have them because my family's in Ecuador. I would love to send it to them. Nice. I was like, nice. absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's like just all these coincidental, you know, things just coming together. Like somebody, um, somebody was talking about a coincidence and he broke down the word and was saying when, when two things coincide, you know, when things mm -hmm. coincide, like almost at an angle or something like that's a coincidence. Yeah. You know, we call it like, what a coincidence. Like how could these things just come together so perfectly? And I just love how you coincided with these events, but it was based on your intention, you know? Yes. First you had the intention, then you see the invention of the inner intention, mm -hmm. you know? You see the confirmation of the affirmation yes. that you put out. So yes. I love that, that it just happened so quickly, you know? So quickly. Yeah. I was like, this has to be, like you said, the angles just met. Yeah. It just, it just met met right there and i was like wow this is beautiful yeah it's absolutely beautiful it, it. and then the second thing that inspired um the dry fasting or air feasting mm -hmm. um biblically was like okay so and i think you were talking about this with a guest on your channel and i don't want to say her name wrong nabia nabia nabiha yeah no, yeah nabiha i think it was with her um but maybe not, maybe not. It might have been some we, we were talking with someone else. But I was thinking about the story in the beginning about the fruit in the garden and then they ate the fruit and then that's when everything kind of like changed. And a lot of like in Christianity, because that's where my roots are, my family same. is our Christians. Same, same. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know how kind of like when they start to uh, take biblical stories and make them into shows and give visuals and stuff behind it. They always refer to the fruit that was eaten as an apple. So in Hebraic culture, because you kind of go back and you read the scripture and you look at it in the Hebrew mm -hmm. to kind of get like a more concrete understanding and not like a westernized, adapted, kind of like very broad picture of it, the Hebraic language is supposed to be more like concrete since it was written in like um hebrew or um i forget the other the other um i forget the other language okay. but um but yeah so i was thinking about that mm -hmm. and they talk a lot about so when you read that when you actually read the scripture even in english it never says that she ate an apple mm. it just is fruit she ate a piece of fruit it was never an apple it says apple nowhere in there okay but it just shows the power of like when you start to put images to things or like just the power of that that like everybody would think it's an apple nobody would ever question right. that right. but then i was like okay as i'm grounding and kind of thinking more about this i'm like what what if it's just that she ate period because as the story starts everything that was made it always says and it was good and in hebrew good the word for good is tov which means functional mm. it's functional so after man and woman or humankind was created it was good mm. it was functional mm -hmm. just as it was created 
But then imagine that and inserting something into that, ingesting something, you kind of are throwing off a balance that was already functional. Okay. So okay. I'm like, prior to that, they're in a garden, they have sun, they're surrounded by water, they have earth. Like they're absorbing all the nutrients that they already mm -hmm. need to maintain the function of the body. But then when you ingest something, now something has to change because, oh, wait, it has to be processed. Oh, wait, this also has enzymes and bacteria and, you know, vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F, G <laughs> in it that it's like, okay, does your body need that though? Mm -hmm. Because what's going to happen is it's going to come out as waste. Okay. So like if it goes in and it's coming out, it didn't need all of what we put in there or it couldn't use all of what we put in there. Right. So that's kind of, kind of like, I was thinking about that too, as far as like Hebraic inspiration right. of like grounding. I'm like, you know, we already have everything that we need to sustain without intaking mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. else, some other life force or some other energy rather yeah. than what's naturally can't hide from the sun so yeah. whatever's gonna hit you from the sun is gonna hit you from the sun. it's gonna hit you yeah it's gonna hit you you and know we're not even supposed to be wearing shoes we're our, our feet are always supposed to be in contact with the dirt the soil the shoes is like a new thing yeah it's a know? new invention oh. you, it's, and this is amazing you know what just your breakdown like your thorough analysis. I love how you're like playing Sherlock Holmes, you know? You're like finding the mystery. You got the magnifying glass and you're looking for the clues and you're like, ah, that makes sense. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Hold on. It's like all this deductive reasoning and you're coming to these conclusions, you're finding your own solution, you know? It's amazing. It's amazing. These, these are not even the questions that I was ever asking. Like, you know, we would just sit in church, you know, we're sitting in the pews, the pastor's on the altar, the pulpit, and he's just talking to the congregation and he's just giving us the, you know, like, but we, I would, we never questioned it. Me, I, I never questioned it, you know? For a long time. Yeah. For a very, never very questioned. long time. And, Cause it's always, mm -hmm. Cause it's always, always what? I was gonna say, it's always kind of like, it's never open for like debate or, right. or like, you know, conversation is just, this is what it is. Right. You know, you take it for what it says, or you just don't, you believe the whole Bible or you don't believe any of it. You know, it's, there's no like, okay, well, can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I like, it, can I open my mind to explore this a little bit more? It's just kind of like, you know, it's, right. it's not that type of thing in church. No, no, definitely not. You know, there wasn't room for questions, you know, when I was growing up and they, these weren't even... Like this wasn't even the knowledge that they taught us in college, you know, like this wasn't the stuff that we never, I never had this, you know, this kind of stuff until later on, then the, the whole universe was actually, it's become my university, yeah. you know, this is yes. the university right here. Class is always in session, yes. you know, and there's constant progression, you know? So as you were speaking, Latresa, earlier, let me just back up just a little bit. Okay. So, so Eva was saying, she was saying that uh, when you were talking about the language, she was saying maybe it was Arabic or Latin yes. that you were talking about. Yes. I think Arabic or, or um, I feel like it's a P. Okay. It starts with a okay. P. Or a P. All right. right. And the Biha, Nabiha joined in. She said in the Quran, <laughs> it says that we didn't use to eat and it was because of Eve and Adam and we became dense and now we need food. So Eva is saying that Eve was an experimentalist, claiming her unique freedom. Perhaps she was pregnant and felt a need for something more. These are some interesting comments here. Yes. Uh, we, crit we critically think now, big brain energy. Yeah, <laughs> class is always in session. Life experiences are the true teacher. Yes. So yeah, they're, they're you know, resonating with this. This is just, oh man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love it too, cause like, um... You know, I kind of think about that those things sometimes, but I'm like, oh, let me just kind of take it one one day at a time. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, my mind wonders sometimes about like in the event of pregnancy, mm -hmm. 
if you were someone who is a big like faster or air feaster how would that how would that impact a pregnancy like well you know, good question you know i mean nabiha is in here i don't know if she's, she's still in here but uh maybe she could comment about that because you know from my my knowledge what she's told us on here that she's gone through that oh, you know wow. she, she's gone through an entire pregnancy in that way so maybe she'll she'll mention something about that but um i can t totally believe that i would love is she you recorded it already like it's a video i can go back and see well i don't know exactly which one we've had so many yeah, I know. Together, so i don't know exactly which one it was but yeah. um yeah she's gone now so she might not have heard me but you know, maybe she, uh, I can get her to message you later about her experience throughout her pregnancy that, uh, that she went in that fasting state, you know. She's wow, that would be amazing. Yeah. And I believe it. I'm like the body, I, I feel like we only, just because the way society is and co colonization and like, you know, the shoes and the, you know, disconnection from nature, um, I feel like, like we we have only scratched the surface yeah. of the body is so intelligent like you said earlier i feel like we're only just scratching the surface of like what's possible right. and like what we're our bodies are just capable of when they're just like you said natural state when we just leave it alone when we just let it do its own thing i agree i can imagine and you know you know, Latresa, when you were talking about, you know, going long days without even like that 30 day juice cleanse and just, yes. you know, these are things that really the, the average person, you know, they're unaware that they can even go that long without solid food. But there's a lot of things that do happen to the body and happen in the body. But one of the things that people worry about is body image, you know, the, the image that they have the comparison that we have with others or should I look like this or maybe I look too gaunt, too frail, too skinny. And then the perception of other people on us when yes. we're going through bodily changes. Did you ever go through that? Was that ever challenging for you? Um, yeah, I was very surprised. And at 30 days, like I got, and I'm already pretty slim just in general. Um, but I think over that 30 days, I lost 12 pounds. And even just this recent juice cleanse, when I told you I did the 11 days and then I did the one dry fasting days, I, uh, one dry fasting day, I lost five, like five or six pounds. So I'm probably at about a solid 95 pounds right now. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I, that, of course, that's not the goal. I'm, I'm not worried about, oh, I'm losing weight. And ha like, that's not the goal at all. I just, get curious sometimes because i see my stomach get flatter and flatter and flatter i'm like i wonder how much i weigh right now <laughs> so i just go check because of that but right before i started the juice um cleanse i was in the mindset of um body image and i was like oh well you know i want to keep my booty i at least want to keep my booty so i was like doing fruits but i was eating like i was over consuming trying to like I got to get in my avocado every day. I got to get in my coconut meat. I got to get in my nuts and seeds. And it was like, I wouldn't even be hungry, but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to lose my butt. Like, I don't want to lose, you know, j just my butt. That was really it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I was over consuming and that's when I started getting the hives. Okay. Because they say like avocado is really high in histamines. If that is what was happening, okay. they were like nuts and seeds is very high in histamines. And I was just getting them in every night. And I was doing it like, you know, sometimes I would get home from work, like right when it's like getting dark. Okay. And they say, you know, if, if you are consuming food, it's not good to do it after dark because your body should be like healing while you rest, not digesting food while you rest. Exactly. But it was like, I was so determined to maintain a body image that it didn't matter what time I was getting home. I'm like, I still gotta have my avocado, my coconut meat and my nuts and seeds, see. you know? See. So- How did you that, overcome that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I got tired of breaking out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my body just kept breaking out and I was, and it was very uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep. Cause like hives are like, if you ever have hives, they're like itchy, but if you scratch them, it kind of hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like you're relieving the itch when you scratch it. It's a little bit like painful. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I couldn't sleep. I was like up through the nights and like, 
it would be like rent like on my rib cages or underneath my thighs or just like random places like they would just come and it was just so uncomfortable and i was like yeah yeah <laughs> i'm over it <laughs> yeah no you know this, i resonate with you so much latrice that's actually one of the things that moves me from food like just just solid food in general you know i i haven't told myself that I'll never go back. I haven't given myself that. You know, it's been over two years now since I've had solid food. Wow. But I haven't wow. told I haven't told my inner child that you'll you'll never have this again or this is yeah. off limits. But one of the things that moved me away from it and made it so it wasn't tempting to go back is what you just said. That it became extremely uncomfortable. Yes. Like I had gotten to this point and I just my body had shifted. And it got to this point of transition where when I did put solid food in my body, it felt like I was about to die. Yes. You know, it was like, I felt like my world was closing in. Like I was starting, it was, things just got darker. It started to, I felt like I was suffocating. I felt like there was a rock in my chest and my solar yes. plexus. And it was like lodged in there and it was tight. And it was like, <gasps> like I couldn't breathe. And this was just a little solid, like just a little something. Yes. A little something, you know? So I was like, okay, obviously I've moved on, you know, obviously I, whatever my frequency or wherever I am now is no longer in resonance because this is, this is feels, it feels like it's yeah. fatal, you know? So that's what kind of moves me along. That's one of the things that kind of ushered me away from solids and allowed me to just go fully into liquids mm -hmm. was the extreme pain and uncomfortability that solid food had. yeah yeah and it's like our bodies will yeah. tell us they're yeah. intelligent it will tell us it's just if we listen or not right. but it will give us all kind of signs that no i can't this doesn't need to be in here i can't whatever it is about this thing don't put it in here anymore right, right. <laughs> you know to tell us but like sometimes we're just on our own thing or we ignore the signs and we just keep on kind of like going how we are you know how we want to but um, I love that you said that because I also, um, so this may be a little bit more for the women who might see this. Okay. Um, so this past time when I just did, um, I did juice, but well, even when I was doing the juice for 11 days, I was still, I was just kind of sipping. I wasn't doing like, you know, when I did the watermelon fast last summer, I was doing like getting up to like a gallon mm. a day kind of thing. I was drinking a lot. But now, I, like, if I drink, it's maybe like eight ounces or something very small, yeah. you know? And um, so I was doing that leading up to the 24-hour air feast. Okay. And when I broke the fast, so I did 24 hours, and then I had a watermelon juice. But I think my mistake was that like I did the first couple sips because they're like you know swish it around in your mouth first just take small sips don't like gulp I gulped a little, little bit after the sips and then like my digestive system or whatever was happening just was like an engine after that it was revved up I was feeling all kind of like hunger okay. things that I hadn't felt for like days you okay. know and especially not when i was doing like the dry fast i didn't feel that it was revved up to the point where i was like okay i'm just gonna have something solid mm -hmm. and i was at work and i was uncomfortable so all these kind of things i was like let me just go have something so i can get through the rest of this shit. yeah so i got i went to the deli down the block and i got some lychee and i ate uh it was probably like a half a pound of lychees so i had that and i was like oh Okay, I feel good. Okay, I feel like, okay. Like, I don't feel that. I quenched the sensation, you know, it's fine. So then I'm on the train home and I'm like, I can kind of have some more lychee. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's like a gateway drug, right? It's like, as soon as you do it, it's like, and but I, I kept checking in with myself. I'm like, I feel fine. <laughs> Jerome, I was battling with myself on this train. I was battling. I was like, but you don't need the lychee, but I want the lychee. But those lychees were juicy. They was kind of good. It felt good to kind of like all these thoughts were going in my mind, right? Yeah, so I yeah. Stopped down, the mind, I stopped down at the mind game. The mind game. Yeah. <laughs> yep, the mind game. So against my better judgment, I stopped down at the fruit stand. I got like a pound more of lychees. 
went to the park bench and I ate them all, right? I still didn't feel like horrible, but today I had like, you know how you get like white uh, acne, like the white, like little pus bumps, like on your face, like Mm -hmm. my entire stomach was covered. My entire stomach was covered in like little, it went away. It took maybe like, I don't know how long they were there. I just noticed I went to rub my stomach when I was on the hike. I just went to like, I had like a crop top and I went to rub my stomach and I lifted my shirt and I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Wow. My entire stomach was covered. Wow. And then um, I also, and that's this is the part I was saying might be for the women. Mm-hmm. So um, prior to this instance, my cycle was like regulating. I was up to maybe like 28 days, 30 days. I'm at about 21 days. My period started. It started. So I'm a little early than I've been maybe the past three months in a row. And I'm like, what did I just do to my body? Mm. (laughs) I'm like, what did I just do to my body? And you know, like sharing the story, I'm smiling about it, but like, I'm really, really just like, what just happened, right. you know? Right. And I thought I ate something like, you know, so harmless or on the schedule, on the, on the scale of like, you know, I, I didn't have a burger. Right. <laughs> I had some fruit and like my body still just, I threw it off. Wow. I, I feel like I something it threw something off because it was kind of getting into this harmonious space. Mm -hmm. It had a full 24. I think my dry fast might've been like, it was like a day and a half. I don't think I broke the fast until like maybe 2 PM. So it was like a full, maybe like day and a half kind of thing. And my body had so much time to be like repairing and doing this and doing that. And it was like the minute I put that lychee in there, I did something because I don't know why my stomach did that and i don't know why i just i'm like is it a coincidence that i just start would i have started my period anyway if i wouldn't have ate the lychee so now i have those thoughts of like did the lychee throw me off or would that have happened anyway had i not eaten the lychee and it's like well i'll I'll never know now i can't you know i can't rewind it but it's interesting because these these are the, the types of scenarios that I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, Latrice, that I wrote things down, you know? Like when you're testing and finding things out and you're experimenting and you're you're doing this trial and error process with food, you're going up and down, in and out, back and forth with all these things. I have journals now, like I have journals that I've written in that I go back and that energy is still there of when I was suffering. You know, mm-hmm. like, dang, you know, I went through that. Oh, yeah, that, I did go through that. Like, oh, yeah, that is that is right, you know? And it happened so many times, and I wrote it down so many times to remember, yeah. you know, for, for my future Jerome, for my future self, to remember this feeling, it was like, okay, I just wrote this down as I was feeling it, you know? as With my stomach bloated, with my feet, with the edema, you know, swelling of the feet, like all the bodily sensations, I would write things down and it just let me know like, okay, this is not for you. Yeah. So yeah, journaling has actually been a lifesaver. It's been a game changer for me. And I relate to that because when I had fibroids, I started journaling, like because my cycle was all over the place. And so I was started journaling to keep track of that. Mm -hmm. And like now, since I've been on this new journey of like experimenting with fasting, I've been writing down like, okay, you know, just any little notes, like, okay, this happened today, or I made it one day, one full day, or like, you know, just the little things that are like this, like the the stomach. And you know, they say when, um, like when we have like those white pimples and things like that, that's the lymph. Mm -hmm. That's lymph fluid. So that's like um, your lymphatic system is the cleansing system of the body. So immediately I was like, my body is like, "Mm, get it out like any way that it can. And because I maybe because I hadn't been intaking a lot of liquids, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was maybe able to just kind of come out so fast in like a stool, you know, or come out. It would just the body was just, I don't know, just maybe trying to just push it out some way. 
And it wasn't like, you know, like they weren't really like poppable. They were just like little white bumps that right. looked mo most similar to like a white, white head. Right. And right. I just was like, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, crazy. And you know, one of the things that I really resonate as well, and I can relate to you on so many levels, Latrice is when you were talking about the, the lychees, you know, at first you had something. <laughs> And then, you know, later on, you were on the train or you were on the, you know, and then you were just thinking to yourself, huh, you know, like that thought just, bloop, it just thought came in like, I kind of want some more, yeah. you know, like I kind of want, like I had that thought, like so many times, there's been so many times where all I did was open a door, you know, and then it was so hard to close it once I yes. opened that door. Yes. But if I never opened the door, I never had to close it. Yeah. You know? So there were times in my life, like during this journey in particular, that if I didn't open myself to a new, like to a new taste or a new sensation or a new, you know, try, oh, let me try this, let me try that. And the moment I did that, that's all I was thinking about for the rest of the day. Yes. The whole day, it was like, you know, back when I was having sushi, that was always on my mind. Yes. Back when I had this, it was always, and not just any, not just any sushi, like that one, yes. you know, like that particular avocado roll with yes. this particular sauce and this particular, like whatever I yes. had that time, like that's all I'm thinking about. And it took up so much mental energy, so much psychic energy, yes. just constantly thinking about food, just constantly thinking about like, oh, when am I going to get it again? Like, uh, how do I get it again? Oh, they're closed. They're closed right now. Nah, I got to wait, you know? And I'm fiending. I'm fiending for something yes. that's, you know? And so I never saw food as a drug. Years ago, I never thought it was addictive. I never thought I could be obsessed with something so, you know, that I thought was so natural, so such a way of life. But yes. it can definitely be that way. Yeah. Yes, because I, I think a lot of times when we think about like a food addiction, we think about like obesity, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, somebody that's obese probably has a food addiction, whether it's a, a link to trauma or whatever. Or I know some people like binge eating mm -hmm. can be like, I know food addiction can kind of go into different categories, mm -hmm. but like you don't think of like the average person being addicted to food right. because it's just like the last i think the last girl that you had on your live like she said everybody's doing it everybody's eating <laughs> like yeah, yeah. it's not like you know how you would look at a drug addiction or like you know if somebody's like shooting up or you know a meth addiction or something like that but when you when you really think about what the body needs to function if if, if you think about like why do you consume what is the point of eating, right? It's to nourish the body, if we just keep it like in a general sense, so that the body has all of the essential minerals and proteins or whatever we believe that the body needs. We're supposed to get that from our food. But I was telling my mom the other day, I was like, well, when you think about it, right? Has any scientist or any person figured out, let's just take vitamin A, for example. Do I need vitamin A every single day? If so, how much vitamin A do I need every single day? And how long does it take for the body to deplete the vitamin A and so, th so that I need to put it back in the body? Like, if you think about that with every mineral, iron, vitamin D, B12, like all these 102 different minerals or 100 and however many that we need, how can we possibly do that how can we possibly be getting all of that and be efficient in all of that all the time? Right. I just feel like why would we be created to one, even have to worry right. about that? Right. And like, right. how is that actually possible to do? We wouldn't be having to count <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every little thing, like. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and I like to even, you know, I like to even hypothesize and just use my imagination. Like, you know, just like you're using all this deductive reasoning. I love that you do this. I love that your mind works this way. But I thought to myself, you know, there had to be a time period where, you know, they talk about paleolithic ancestors and people in migration and constant movement. And then, you know, like hunters and gatherers or just, you know, people who are just taking what they have at that 
current location and moving on to the next. And they didn't have freezers. They didn't have refrigerators. They didn't have pantries. They didn't have grocery stores. But we've, we've made it. Somehow we made it. We're here. We're still here, you know? And like, how did we make it without McDonald's and without KFC and without Chick-fil-A and without like, like all these things we, we survive, yes. you know? So that means the body, the body's able to do miraculous things that we just, we have no idea. Like we're not in that field or, or that mode right now where we're thinking about all the things, but we somehow we've kind of gotten under this hypnosis that we think we need an abundance of all sorts of things that we, we never needed before. Yeah. You know? Like, how are we still here now? If we didn't have all this stuff, like, why are we still here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's just, it's just, it's just so much, like, it's just so much stuff and it's so easily accessible. Right. And, you know, I That's was walking cool. today, I had to go to Port Authority. Okay. And I'm like, wow, all of these, you know, new fast food, well, maybe not new, but, you know, I'm from Pennsylvania. So there's a lot of fast food, like Southern fried chicken spots and stuff that I don't know about, but now they're coming like into the city. Like, I can't tell you how many Chick-fil-A's are in New York. When I, I saw a new McDonald's near Port Authority, I'm like, how many more McDonald's do we need? Like the Jollibee's or however you pronounce it, the Raising Cane's are now, it's just flooding. Yeah. It's just everywhere. And you know, and I look at the advertisement and I'm like, oh, $5 for a whole meal. But in New York, like, let's say you want something raw vegan, it's $30 to get like some spiralized zucchini, some walnut crumble, <laughs> And like a sauce, yeah. it's thirty dollars. So it's like when you look at it in comparison to like the five dollar meal deal versus something, it's a drastic difference in price to you know yeah. eat something yeah. that so, you know. So the people who aren't really health conscious and they're more like wealth conscious, they're not health conscious. Yes. They're wealth conscious. They're, it's for them, it's a no brainer. You know, yes. I'm going for the dollar menu. Give me the hot and spicy, yep. give me the double cheeseburger okay. and give me some fries to go. You know, like I'm not taking, I'm not going to Whole Foods or I'm not going to Sprouts or I'm not going to, you know, these places are going to take my, my bank account, yeah. you know, and I'm going to be at zero. So, you know, it's just so many levels, so, you know, so, so many, many levels to this. It's like yes. when we're thinking about the, the programming and yes. then just what we're breaking out of the paradigms, the paradigms. So, Actually, I want to ask you, Latrisa, what do you see? What do you see for the future? You know, for for one, what do you see for yourself? Like, what do you envision on this journey, on your path? What do you en envision for yourself? And and what do you envision for the world? What do you see as the collective years from now? You know, you know it was interesting that you say that because my first, the first thing that came to my mind when you were asking that is I was thinking the other day. I said, you know. If inflation gets out of control, people will see how capable the body is. If food gets so expensive, people people are going to be so scared to die, but they're actually going to start healing. <laughs> That's what I was thinking the other day, because I was like, the body is going to finally have an opportunity to take a break from digesting food and start to heal itself. And the contrary of what we think will happen is, oh, everybody's just gonna start dying off because we don't have food now. No, people are gonna start healing in miraculous ways. So that was my first thought. I was like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. So I think maybe I think that might... <laughs> but see, that's what happens when you like fast, all these kind of like thoughts come in your mind that are like, whoa. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now I will say, you know, not to like, um not like I'm trying to double side or debate, but I will say just to, just to put this out there, and this is a theory of mine because I've been to so many retreats with Ellie Tom and he talks about how if you don't know a program exists, you can't download it, right? Mm -hmm. like, if you don't know an idea or if something is even possible for you, like how would you realize something that you don't believe could ever be, you know, for you? So when I was in the retreat, I think the only reason that I went so long without food and water, like the longest dry period that I went was two weeks. Oh, wow. The only, the, oh. The only reason I made it there was 
well, there were multiple reasons. The collective synergy of the group that I yes. was with, also the energy work we did every day, the exercise, the, the meditation, but it was also the belief. Yes. It was also just knowing that my body could receive nourishment from something else, that that idea just, it allowed for something miraculous where years ago, you could have never told me ever told me that that was even possible like yes. i was scared to go one day without food years ago now i'm going you know over 10 days over 14 days and it's like blowing my mind yeah but if i did not believe that that was possible you know they say that a belief can can block energy energy flow based on your belief you know mm -hmm. so it's like if you don't have it in the mind that's not what you find yeah so, so i will say that um you know, I do feel I do feel that sentiment that you know there will be healings all over the place if we get into that that situation. Mm -hmm. But also, it is like a realization. Yes. You know, it is an individual person that has to come to their own understanding of, I am not just this flesh and bone. Yes. You know, like I am actually the energy that is within this vessel. Like I am a spirit in a body. I I am not a body, but I live in a yes. body. You know, like that consciousness is not like the majority does, doesn't have that consciousness, but yeah. it was only when I went long periods that I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt. And it gets me emotional because it was like, no one can ever tell me now, yeah. you know, I just, I know it now. It's a knowing. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's a knowing. So wait, what, what did you, um, why did you end it at two weeks? So, you know, there were different things. So when I was with the group, I went in dry, I went in five days dry and wow. I came out dry. But then when I went back around different people, I was in um, it, the time that I started eating again. This is this is a funny story. <laughs> the time that I did start eating again was in downtown Los Angeles in a studio apartment. I was in a yoga studio and I was with, I think, uh, it was eight of us in there. There were several bunk beds in there. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, coming from the retreat with Ellie Tom, I had been dry for so long that it was just my way of being, mm -hmm. you know? So I stopped counting the days. I stopped counting. I just kind of went on. And then I was just like, for a while, I was like a vampire. I was up, everybody else was sleeping and I was up reading books, pacing back and forth with right. energy, just energy through the roof. And then if I did sleep, I only slept like a couple hours and my body was, plugged up and charged and ready to go. And then one of these nights, Latrice, <laughs> one of these nights, uh, cause my friend, they were always cooking something. They were always making something. And I remember this girl, I forgot her name, but she made some uh, kettle corn, like some popcorn. And she's she was offering it to everybody inside the studio. And she offered it to me and I said, no, no, it's okay, I'm good. You know, she's like, oh, you always, you know, you always say you're good, you know, like, you can have it if you want, it's okay, you know, I just made it. And I was like, no, it's okay, it's fine. I, I just wanted to be polite. So she said, okay, well, if you want it, it'll be right here for you, right? It'll be here for you if you want it. Like, I'm just gonna leave this cup here. Oh, no. And if you want it, it'll be right here, right? And so I said, okay, cool, right? Now I went back to my bunk bed and just like you, when you were on that train, just when you were thinking that idea, like, huh, you know, it's been a while, right? <laughs> like, I wonder what it would taste like now. Latrice, I'm t telling you, the moment that I put that in my body, I went crazy. Yes! I went crazy. For the next, I think, I don't know, for the next maybe three months, I was in a full-blown, this was like a, like a real eating disorder. Never, ever in my life have I felt like I had an eating disorder until that period. Oh, wow. So wow. that period, I was eating everything. I, I was digging in peanut butter jars, scooping it out with my fingers. Oh my I was going to this Gosh. convenience store, that gas station, getting almonds and chips and, and like dip, and then oh going to this, this food stand and that truck and this place, because downtown Los Angeles, everything was right there. You know, like everything was in the same vicinity. So I went crazy and that was one of the hardest things that I ever had to like claw my way. It felt like I was, literally clawing my way out of the graveyard yes. that, that I had dug with my teeth. I had dug yep. the grave with yeah. my teeth and I was six feet deep, but I dug it with my teeth. And now wow. I'm like climbing back out like, ah, and do you know the only thing that got me out of that cycle? 
like that downward spiral. What was it? It was love. I know that it sounds cliche. It was self love. That was the only thing that I got me out. That. I had to look at myself in the mirror. I had to say, Jerome, this is not you. Like, yeah. you, you're better than this. You're more than this. Like, I had to just tell myself, I love you. I had to look at myself in the mirror with, with tears coming down my eyes. Like, there was, there was stuff just like my, my mouth was full, my stomach was full, and I could not stop eating. Oh, my God. And when I finally just accepted where I was and just, you know, like they say, the first step of the Alcoholics Anonymous, right? The just admitting, admitting that this needs to be addressed. I need to acknowledge this. I can't hide from this anymore. You know, I have mm -hmm. to face this. I have to embrace this. Like, I can't erase this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I looked at myself in the mirror and I just, I was just saying words of affirmation. I just set myself love. I spoke to myself like a person that I love, yes. you know? Yes. I spoke to myself like, like a child. Like, I talked to myself. I, I, I hugged myself. I, I, I apologized to my body. Mm -hmm. I mean, this stuff, I never even had that relationship with my own yeah. body. So yeah. I was just really just, you know, asking my body for forgiveness. You know, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And I literally feel, I know this sounds weird. <laughs> I felt like my body responded. Like, I felt like it heard me and it was like, it's so okay I for, like it's okay yeah all is all is well you know and after that point then we started working like a team again and slowly my mind and my body just came back into a harmonious yes. unit yes. and i was able to to let go again bit by bit piece by piece i started tapering back and i don't know if i've ever really shared this story like this so thank you for just yeah. bringing this out of me you know like thank you <laughs> Of course, I was curious because I'm like two yeah. weeks is like that's yeah. that's awesome, you know. My my longest was three days, so two weeks that's that's amazing. It was <laughs> that's really good. It broke everything. It broke. Yeah. It broke my perception, my perspective, my what I thought that I knew. It broke everything, you know. It shattered completely, and you know now that I know that that's possible, it's like. You know, I'm just living now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's I, all like I think too, like what you were saying about community mm -hmm. is like, I, I feel like I'm at a place where I want that because I think at a certain point, like for me is like, um, I do a lot of stuff by myself. I moved to New York by myself in 2007 right. for college. So I'm used to doing things like alone and being kind of on my own and being very independent. Um, but sometimes I feel like with this in particular, um, like for example, relationships, mm -hmm. right? I see online a lot of people, um, like, cause I follow a lot of raw vegans cause that's where I experienced my healing with the fibroids. Mm -hmm. And I'm always so blown away when I follow this like raw vegan person and I'm seeing like, you know, their lifestyle and then they show their partner and they're like, yeah, they still eat meat mm -hmm. <laughs> or I cook them, you know, or like they're just not there yet, you know, or they might be vegan, but they're not raw or like just the eating styles are so different. I'm like, how does that work? You know, mm -hmm. and it works for some people, but I feel like if from my personal experience being in relationship with somebody who does not have the same eating habits as you it's kind of hard for me to like stick to what i want to do because i don't know i feel like a partner can be so influential yeah. like in your life mm -hmm. so um i've really been struggling with that i've really struggled with that and um but I feel like I'm at a place where I do want to just be more around like-minded people that I can share in like activities that I feel like are fulfilling yeah. and nourishing to the body without it having to do with consuming something, without going to dinner, without. So that's why I went on the hike today. Yeah. I just found an Instagram group that was going on a hike and it was in Jersey and it was you know, close enough that I could get there. And I'm like, you know what? That's something that I, that's more of my speed right, <laughs> right now. That's more of my frequency right now. Right. Um, but so it felt good to be in community in that way. But it's like, when I think about a possible 
lifestyle of like not intaking food, even though, you know, my mind is so calculated. I've already, in my mind, it makes sense. I, my mind is sustainable. Like, I know that it's sustainable. But I'm like, is that, when I think about it, I'm like, who's going to want to be on that journey with me? <laughs> <laughs> People look at you like you're crazy at first. Like, the average yeah. person is going to look at you like you're absolutely crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, she yeah. done went off the deep end somewhere. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, so when you were saying about going to the community and like it was a group thing that you all were doing it there was like a collective energy around it there was like a you know camaraderie and stuff around it i'm like i feel like i don't have that encouragement and i feel like sometimes it takes it kind of takes so much to um you know, just stand firm in that all by yourself a little bit. When you're like uh, the rest of the world, you look around, you know, especially when you're drive passing, somebody's eating on a train, mm -hmm. somebody's drinking it. You constantly seeing people consuming all around you. And then as you walk through the streets, there's smells of food everywhere. There's Spanish food, there's pizza, there's oils from the taco mm -hmm. stand there, you know? So it's just constantly like you feel kind of like, I don't belong here. Wow, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> an know? alien, like, like an alien on the, you know. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah. anybody that I walk up to and have this conversation with right now is going to be like, yeah. girl, <laughs> <laughs> you need to go check yourself in somewhere. Yeah, and it's interesting too because, you know, I, I've met so many people out here. Like, I can just name so many names of people that that I've come in contact with just in my general area. And I'll go in the grocery store, I'll get the same juices and, and stuff to make juice and then come out. And, you know, nobody ever asked me because nobody ever, they would never question it. You know, they would never think like, oh, he's not eating food, like he doesn't eat. They would never think that, you know? So I know that I'm probably one of the only people, I don't know, I mean, it's probably a really low percentage that even believe that it's possible. So. Yeah, it is kind of like you feel like an alien, like from outer world. Yes. Like you just here on this planet, and you're just here, and everybody's doing, living so differently. So sometimes you feel very out of place. Yes. You feel very like like in my family. I'm I'm the black sheep. I'm over there. I'm Me on too. the outside. You know, and there's no love lost because yes. fortunately, I've learned how to operate within my family that where it's not, it's not there's no pressure. I, I never put pressure on anybody to change what they're doing. You know, I, I always kind of just embody what I'm doing. And if mm -hmm. they have questions, they come around if they have questions, but I never tell them what they should or should not do. That's never right. That never and so that's a, exactly. So that's allowed us to still have a lot of love for each other. And since they see the way that I operate, the way that I move and maneuver, they know that I'll be all right. Like they've seen me on the highway, like just walking, you know, walking and reading a book. They've seen me on the road and, you know, they, at first they were passing me by and downing the window and like offering me a ride. But then they started just, they kept on going. After a while, they just kept on going because mm -hmm. they knew that I was in my mode. You know, that's, that's where I, that's like my, one of my forms of nourishment is walking yeah. every day. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's just like, it's interesting. But but when you're talking about this, Latrice, it's, mm -hmm. it really does um, resonate. Like, I, I kind of gave up. There was a while that I gave up on any kind of relationship. I was in a celibacy path for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting that the moment that I let go, somebody came in. Yes. Like some, somebody came in when I fully let go. And I said, yes. okay, you know what? If I, if I don't find anybody for the rest of my life, I'm good. The moment yeah. I said that, the universe was like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there you go. <laughs> That's amazing how that happened. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. But it's like, That's beautiful, too. Yeah. So the moment, it was the moment that I just released it. That's when it came in. So that's it's happened with so many things. Yeah. And is yeah. it? Is, is it like, do you feel that, um, like with your lifestyle, is that person compatible, you know? 
Absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's totally compatible. You know, she's she's even more compatible than I bargained for. Wow. Like, like, that I that I even thought possible. Like, yeah. Um, the way that she lives, the way that she operates, the way that she perceives reality, yes. and the way that she, you know, the way that she receives nourishment, the way that she, you know, kind of lives and breathes and moves, it's, it's very graceful. And mm -hmm. it also, I mean, there's really no attachment. She doesn't have many attachments. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. fascinating to, to witness because even me, you know, I'm not eating any solid food, but she makes me think like I have too much. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you know, like I'm drinking juice, you know, not gallons and gallons, but yeah. you know, I still drink a few bottles here yeah. and there, but she's literally taking a few sips and that's it for wow. the day. Oh yeah. For the day. And she's like, yeah. she's good for the day. It's amazing. You know, she can have like a little bottle of this, like a little bottle of water. And that's good for yes. the day. Yes. So I, it was blowing my mind. I was like, wow, you really, you really live like this, yeah. you know? And you're good. She has a full blown job. She has a full time job. She's, she's working hours and coming back and driving and wow. she's cognizant. She's not fainting. She's not falling over. She's good. That's, so she really, she's let me know, just like Ellie Tom, it's the mind. Yeah. It really is the mind, like the mind you know what the mind believes the mind receives yeah you know and if we don't believe it if we don't perceive it we don't receive it mm -hmm. you know if we don't mm -hmm. receive it. so it really is so much more powerful than than we ever take credit like we don't give ourselves enough credit for the power mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well first i love that for you both Thank that you. is beautiful <laughs> i love that for you both yeah and two, what you were saying about the sips is true because imagine, right? If you can go two weeks without nothing, yeah. Do we really need, you know, like thinking back to like, okay, what is it that we really need? Right, right, right. And the and the kind of like addictive part that could be a part of it is like, okay, I kind of just want it now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then, but that is that's amazing. That's amazing. I try that. That's what I'm. Well, not that like I, I try to do that, but if I do have some juice, I only want it. I I want to give myself a sip first, just to be like, okay, am I good? And then like check in yeah. before I'm just like go 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 go. Like, right. Right. You know, and then it's like, oh, now my stomach is uh, all kind of things are going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, because I feel like yeah, like you said, it's very minimal that's needed. Yeah. But I love that relationship aspect um, yeah. for yeah. you both because I feel like that has been a big challenge, mm. a big challenge for me. And not that I'm like, I want to be in relationship so bad. I just feel like when I do get in relationship, I kind of like, um, I kind of like evolve or kind of go to a next another level like pretty like faster than my partner always mm -hmm. and then it's always kind of like i'm trying to throw down the rope <laughs> but they're not ready to climb up <laughs> they're not ready yet so yeah. then i just kind of come become almost hyper fixated about like what they're doing or what they're not doing right. and that like i think it kind of it just throws me off because then i'm like okay well is what i'm doing really that important <laughs> Like, can I just kind of live that way? Like, they're living that way. It would be easier. Sorry if you can hear the okay. ambulance. Okay. No worries. No worries. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it kind of be easier to just kind of do what they're doing. So then we'll kind of be more compatible. Or, like, then I just don't have, like, this temptation that I'm constantly fighting mm -hmm. of, like, watching them be this other way. But I know that there's a way that's more, you know, I don't know, elevated or, or whatever it is, yeah. however you want to say yeah. it um so that 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 part is tough i think mm. i'm okay with being you know i'm chilling mm. right now mm. but when i do think about partnership i'm like well like like you said when i let go you know it it, it will just come and it'll be you know something beyond yeah. probably what i ever even pictured or imagined yeah for myself. you know sometimes you know it is that way when we 
you know, when we let go, when we surrender the expectation, we open the door of possibility. Yeah. Yes. When we let go of that expectation, when we let go of what we think it should be or what we think it would be, we make room for what it could be. Yes. You know? And it's amazing. Like, I mean, yeah, it's it just every time. Yeah, it just it never ceases to amaze. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it's encouraging to have that support. Like, if you're going to have somebody that close to you, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to, like, eating, because, you know, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. But, like, to have somebody, like, that close to you, it would be nice yeah. to have somebody on your same wave. So it's not like you're constantly, like, you know, you got to already battle with whatever your thoughts are. Right. And then to also like the person that's closest to you is not on that same page to just kind of help encourage or support or, you know, just kind of be, sometimes I feel like it helps to just have somebody that's on that journey mm -hmm. with you. Because for me, it's not, it hasn't been an easy one. Like mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, the world is not um, set up anymore mm. for that kind of lifestyle. It's for overconsumption. It's for, you know all of that so it's kind of like to be doing something contrary to what you know society is yeah. the reality of like what it is right now and yeah. to have, have the closest person next to you just kind of like in that society category and you're you just, i don't know it makes me just feel kind of lonely like yeah am i am i in you know, it's kind of like a lonely thing. And it's like, okay, well, I'm lonely in this relationship because I feel like I'm doing something so. Yeah. And I, I felt like that before. Like, that's one of the worst things, actually, is to feel lonely in a relationship. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be alone without being lonely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know what you mean. For but, sure. For sure. You, know, uh, all, all you, gave, me, you gave me hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, divine timing for sure. Never, you know, never lose hope. But you know, it's like, um, man, it's just we're just we're just having that intention, but letting go of the how or the when or the what, yes. or just like just have the you know the vision, but just let go of how it's gonna happen, and how it's yeah. gonna take place, and just be be ready to be surprised. Yeah, you know, be ready to be amazed. Like just just be ready. Yeah, yeah. Just be ready. Yeah. I, yeah. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, Latrice, this has been amazing. I think we could have like like three three or four more talks like this. We have so much that we could touch on, you know. Yes. Like you said, we've only scratched the surface, but thank you so much just for coming on today. Like thank, thank you, you for, for just me. Yeah, like I th this is a privilege for me, but also just your energy. You you oh. sparked me up, like you hyped oh. me up, you fired me up. Like when you came in here, just the, the energy that you're giving and the life that you're living, it's vibrant, it's vibrant. Yeah. And I really just, you know, I appreciate that your, your authenticity, you're allowing yourself to live your truth and you're not allowing yourself to, you know, to get down with the wavelengths and, you know, the energies that you might be around in the heart of New York City. In, in Harlem, yes. in Harlem yes. of all places, like yes. living this way, just to know that someone is living like this in Harlem. I mean, you know what I mean? That's yes. amazing. That's already amazing. And you know, I used amazing. to make it kind of like an excuse, but that's one of the things that I've been working on is like, no, I'm not, excuse is just gonna hold you back, right? right? So I'm like, okay, how can I overcome that? Yeah. Like for a while, I would not ground. I would not do it because I was like, I don't want to step in dog poop mm. or glass mm. or like a crack needle, you know, because that's just the reality. People go in the park and they shoot up and they leave. Yeah. I was scared to ground. <laughs> so I, when I really got serious about this, I started kind of like scouting. I was like looking kind of like scouting locations because I was like, I need, I need to do this. Like I can't this is where i'm at right now in this space and time as i'm evolving to this place of like connecting back to nature if this was not meant for me to have if this was not meant to happen for me in this space and time i wouldn't be in new york city right. where it seems so impossible to do it because it, it there is so many things that you could allow to stop you right. but it's just like 
this would not be happening for me right now if it were not possible. So I just have to push past those fears and kind of push past that thought process and elevate myself and just do it. I just have to do it. And I think when I started my raw vegan journey, that helped me too, because people were always saying, oh, it must be so hard to be, you know, raw in New York. And that also presented challenges. Like I had to travel for food. Like when I did my watermelon um, juice cleanse last summer, and actually even now when I was um, juicing, to, for me to go get watermelon, first of all, people sell seeded watermelon. If you want black seeded watermelon, you can get it from like a street vendor, but you're going to pay $25 for a watermelon. Wow. I wow. did it like twice in the very beginning. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> so there's Wegmans. Um, they, we now have Wegmans. We just got Wegmans in the city. There's like one in Brooklyn. There's one in downtown Manhattan. Okay. And they sell them for $8. Hmm. So when I go get watermelon, I take my shopping cart, I take a bus across the bridge, maybe like, I don't know, maybe it's like a 15 minute bus ride. And then I get on the train, I transfer to another train to get to Wegman. So it's a, for me, it's like a 45 minute to an hour commute. That's dedication. Just to get seated. That's dedication. That's dedication right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I feel like that really helped me break, you know, any kind of like limitation right. of like, if I feel like this is for my better health, mm -hmm. I got to figure it out mm -hmm. or I'm just, I'm going to really block my potential, yeah. you know, whatever that is, you know, whatever my fullest potential is. And it's like, this is calling me. So I can't, I just got to figure it out. Yeah. You, you know no we're putting the pieces together you know yeah. I love, just i love your courage your fearlessness you know your bravery with this and like what you're willing to do what you're willing to do for yourself yeah. what you're willing to do for your health and just you, you know you're you're blazing the trail you're you're a pioneer you're paving the path for like people that don't even know you know people that have no idea and it's so inspiring like even just during this conversation, I mean, the time just flew by. We've already talked for like maybe an hour and a half, but it just flew by like that. We time travel, yes. you know, but so many yes. people during this live, Latrice, so many people have been just showing love, like hearts have been raining on you and just been saying like, thank you so much for this conversation. You know, thank you for your testimony and just thank you just for, just for your, openness and your transparency of the realness you know that people call it the raw authenticity you know you're you're keeping it raw authentic you know <laughs> Roth, i love that raw authentic i love yeah. it <laughs> yeah that's cool i love so that we appreciate it and um please let's do this again let's yes. do this again. Yeah. yes absolutely i would love to thank you for inviting me to share yeah. um like i said i spend a lot of time alone so a lot of these thoughts just are right mm -hmm. here <laughs> and they just kind of like stay with me sometimes i share with my mom or like my friends but like this was i i'm grateful thank you for allowing me to share with your audience and for the conversation the encouragement the inspiration just the engagement the community um what you post you know the interviews that you do with other people they they're really helpful. I know sometimes we do things just because it's like, okay, yeah, I like to talk about this, or this is my lifestyle, or, you know, sometimes we don't really think uh, too much on, you know, kind of the things we do when we go live with people or just share our experiences, right. but they have been profound in like just helping me to look at things, just a different perspective and to be like, huh, let me think about that. Yeah. Or huh, let's not experiment with that. It's been instrumental in my journey, uh, especially this part of my journey. So thank you so much. Thank yes, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the intention. <laughs> That's the intention. You yes. know? So I'm glad that, you know, that energy is received. It is. I'm glad. It, is. I'm glad. it truly is. So, wow. Blessings. Blessings, Patricia. You enjoy the rest of your yes, day. Thank you. Know? Thank you. Enjoy you the too. rest of the evening. My and, favorite know, to you, Jerome. If, if some Somebody had questions for you that maybe they didn't get to ask during the live or or maybe we didn't catch them as the comments were just going up uh would you would you open like maybe if they wanted to send you a dm or if of they course. wanted to, you know? okay of course awesome. is there
there a way that we can see questions um like does it go in as comments well there's a little bubble there's a little question bubble over here but you know yeah next time we'll definitely uh we'll definitely be able to answer a lot more questions i'm sure you know but i do see oh, okay yeah one one's asked okay jessica's asking what lifestyle do you live liquidarian raw vegan oh. so she probably came in a little bit yeah. later on yeah. yeah yeah so yeah and i i think just to briefly answer that mm -hmm. i kind of like i don't know if i like the labels mm -hmm. you know because i feel like i've claimed so many labels <laughs> and then it's like you know oh yeah i'm raw and then but i have a period of time where i just only drink right. liquids right. so i i kind of don't think you know and and you know sometimes life happens and you <laughs> kind of like so i think right now i just want to experience how what my body does naturally without interference i love that i love that that, that yeah. that's just kind of like the space that i'm in yeah. right now if, if 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 i do consume something ideally i would like it to be liquid Okay. If I do okay. consume anything, ideally, I would like it to be liquid. I, but I like that. I, I like the way you said that. <laughs> the way you said that was so smooth, Latissa. It was smooth. It you, came were like, from the soul. you were like, I, I want to experience the non-interference. Yes. You know? okay. Yeah. Just and, and non-interference. I want to be devoted to that. I want to be dedicated yeah. to that. You know, and just take it one day at a time. Yeah. No pressure. No, like I just know that that's what I want to experience, and I know I have to just back off to experience it. Yeah. So that's yeah, it. That's all. That's, that's the, you're like the only thing I have to do is do nothing. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, and find that, out. That's it. Yeah. Exactly, and not let my you know, my mind of what I was previously taught, not let that stuff like start to interfere. Cause you know, when you start doing something different, you're like, wait, yeah. what? Am I okay? Am right. I, can I do this? Right. So yeah, just my own thoughts and that's it. So I like, I like how you took the labels off of the table, you know, taking the labels off of the table, we become more willing and able. Yeah. So take <laughs> off of the table. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So blessings, yes. blessings once again, and um, yeah, we'll 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 do this again. Okay, we'll cool. Do this again. Much favor, right. Jerome. Thanks a bunch. I'm super grateful. Much love, much love. Have Take a, care. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining, everybody. Have a good night or day wherever you are. <laughs> All right.